Hey, are you a video game fan who's been wanting to see what a fight between Dante and Bayonetta would look like? Because if you are, I think this episode of Ruby is as close as you'll get till Marvel vs. Capcom 4 comes out. Ruby, it's Brawl in the Family. Private? But I didn't even make that pun. Oh, well, puns still suck. Anyway, the episode starts with Weiss and Ruby running to meet Winter, and she lives up to her name. Or she puts up an icy facade at the very least. But this family get-together is crashed by good old Uncle Crow, whose fight with Winter is only stopped by the timely intervention of General Tin Man, who whisks the both of them off to an unproductive discussion about what Cindy's been up to with the Wizard of Oz and the Good Witch of the North. Finally, we see that Cindy's program gives her access to various computers when an infected terminal is used to log on, and she can now select which combatants fight in the tournament. So she throws Emerald and Mercury up against Team Coffee's Coco and that teenage half-giant dude. Alright, starting off, this is the first really good look we've gotten at Winter and Crow. Obviously, Crow is one awesome dude. He's got a relaxed, confident attitude that will no doubt make him a fan favorite. Now, I'm not too clear on his weapon. We've heard that he uses a scythe like Ruby. But here he's got a sword. My guess is it turns into a scythe, so it's got like three weapon modes, which is cool. Also, he seems to have Ruby's speed. Alright, now on to Elsa. Winter is confusing. Honestly, the goal seems to be to outdo Weiss in every possible way. She's got two rapiers instead of one. She has more crazy magic powers, and she has those glyph thingies. She also has that trademarked schnee attitude, authoritative and dismissive. But she seems to care about Weiss, in a weird way. They're not an affectionate family. But Winter's cool for a high-strung military official. Okay, now I need to get into the storytelling. There's a trope called Chekhov's gun, or as J.J. Lensflare Abrams calls it, the mystery box. Basically, it's a thing that'll be important later. And these are littered all over Ruby's story. Some examples include, but are not limited to, what is Adam doing? What is Penny's true purpose? What did Raven tell Yang? What is Jean's semblance? And everything about Ozpin. But the biggest is Cinder's plan. The only thing which is actually explained in this episode is one function of the Black Queen program that she uploaded last season. It gives her access to Vale's security systems and the Atlas fleet. But Brawl and the family raises a whole bunch of new questions about Cinder. First off, who is this chick that she can scare gang leaders, bad <laughs> monster killers, and the military industrial complex? Also, she's apparently responsible for something or someone called Autumn's condition. My guess is it's bad. Oh, and apparently there's a whole new level of threats beyond the White Fang, War Between the Kingdoms, and the Grim that only Oz's inner circle knows about. So with all that in mind, let's break down the good and the bad in Ruby, Brawl, and the Family. On the good side, Winter and Crow are both very cool. Literally and figuratively, I presume. You presume correct, sir. And we get a pretty sweet fight out of them. And there's also some nice comedy from Ruby and Weiss. But on the downside, I'm getting mighty sick of being kept in the dark about what Cindy's actually up to. And what little we learn in this episode only makes things more confusing and convoluted. But hey, this episode's still fun, so I give Ruby, Brawl in the Family, a 4 out of 5. Now be sure and come back next time for my review of Ruby Season 3, Episode 4. And if you're interested in reviews of anime, movies, TV shows, comic books, or video games, check out my channel on YouTube at StupidPrivate913, or find my Facebook and DeviantArt pages for video updates and more. Thank you for watching. Hey kids, today's show is brought to you by the letter 4 and the number potato! I'm a stupid private.